currency. The new world order. Those are the roots of trouble. I imagine that right now you're feeling a bit like Alice, tumbling down the rabbit hole. Hmm? Let me tell you why you're here. You're here because you know something. What you know you can't explain, but you feel it. You felt it your entire life. That there's something wrong with the world. You don't know what it is, but it's there, like a splinter in your mind, driving you mad. It is this feeling that has brought you to me. This is your last chance. After this, there is no turning back. You take the blue pill, the story ends. You wake up in your bed and believe whatever you want. You take the red pill, you stay in Wonderland. And I show you how deep the rabbit hole goes. All I'm offering is the truth. Nothing. Well, we are opposed around the world by a monolithic and ruthless conspiracy that relies primarily on covet means for expanding its sphere of influence, on infiltration instead of invasion, on subversion instead of elections, on intimidation instead of free choice, on guerrillas by night instead of armies by day. It is a system which has conscripted vast human and material resources into the building of a tightly knit, highly efficient machine that combines military, diplomatic, intelligence, economic, scientific, and political operations. Its preparations are concealed, not published. Its mistakes are buried, not headlined. Its dissenters are silenced, not praised. No expenditure is questioned, no rumor is printed, no secret is revealed. But I am asking your help in the tremendous task of informing and alerting the American people. And now, welcome to another episode of Down the Rabbit Hole. Here's your host from federaljack.com. It's Popeye. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to tonight's episode. It is April 25th, 2012. Another live edition of Down the Rabbit Hole. Want to give you guys a heads up as to what's coming up the next couple days on my show. Make sure you tune in this Friday. I have my good friend, Carolyn, if I could talk correctly, Carolyn Rose Goita coming on. You've heard her on my show before, and every time Carolyn comes on, it's just, uh, uh, I don't know how to put it, uh, fun to say the least. She's a very interesting person. And uh, I appreciate her point of view on things. So Friday, she's going to be coming and hanging out with me. And we're going to be going over all the craziness that's been going on. And she hasn't been on in a while, so it's going to be an interesting show. So I'm kind of excited. And then, of course, this coming Sunday, 1 to 7, here on the Orion Talk Radio Network, we have an exclusive, my interview with Judith Vary Baker, the last one she did with me back in uh, the end of... December. It was right before Christmas, but the uh, I got a little sidetracked, and I, I never got. I, ha- I had to put it off due to a health issue for uh, a little while, and I finally got back into editing it. And it took me probably about three and a half, almost four days of solid just working on that, and nothing else. And so that's why it took so long because the interview was over six hours long. So I had to fix some of the audio levels because I was talking to her on a phone, long distance, and I wanted to make sure it came out clear for radio. So everything's all set and done. And on Sunday, you guys are going to hear the last interview she's going to do until 2013. And it's not just about JFK. We talk about JFK. We talk about Lee. We talk about her work with the cancer, but we touch on other stuff too. Judith talks about pretty much whatever was on her mind. She needed to vent. There was a ton of stuff that she wanted to talk about. And I just let her go. So it is Judith Vary Baker like you've never heard her before. It's going to be a very interesting interview, trust me. Even when I went back and listened to it after I cleaned everything up and then I I, I rendered the the full six hours and I listened to it, it was just – even I was blown away by the vast uh, different array of topics that we covered. I was asking her questions and she was just on point. She was rattling off info, just tons of information. So – I'm sure you guys are really going to enjoy it. All right. There's one other thing I want to get into, and then I'm going to get into the news and everything else. Everybody I've noticed lately on Facebook, and I get messages once in a while, but usually it's Facebook, and sometimes I'll get the emails, but mostly through social networks because we use the the social networks to spread links and stuff. 
I've had people telling me that they, they try to bring up Federal Jack and they can't because a vast either won't let them or it tells them that it's we, uh, we're very bad and we have uh, viruses and everything else. Okay, first of all, Avast isn't the greatest software in the world, but uh, they don't operate off of fresh new information. They operate off of a list that they compile, basically, like any other company does. They have a list of bad websites. I'm doing air quotes. Remember, we were attacked. We were hacked a couple months ago, and this was when uh, the Intel Hub was getting attacked and the lie. Uh, we get attacked all the time. Activist Post was getting attacked. Everybody was getting pretty much attacked. And uh, we had, I don't know if it was malware or whatever it was, there was a um, there was a redirect, I think, if I remember correctly, that was on there. And it was only for mobile phones and, and Wi-Fi devices. But it, it doesn't matter. A vast, uh, I guess, whatever it, it got um, listed on their list. And then Google you know, for a while flagged us as a bad site and that takes forever to go away. Okay. So when a lot of times people are trying to go to federal Jack and their stuff says, Oh, virus, Ooh, bad threat site. No, there is nothing on there. Okay. Madison Rupert even confirmed this. Him and I were having an off air conversation about this on Facebook the other day and he checked it out. Uh, there's one of these sites, I guess you could, it runs like a virus scan on, uh, <clears throat> on the website, whatever it was, he sends me the link and he's like, yeah, you're right. There's no viruses on the site. So it's, it's just, we have to wait for this listing on Google as a bad site to go away. And one of my IT guys actually was talking to him about 30 seconds up to, uh, you know, me g coming on air pretty much during the intro of the show. I was still chatting with him really quick about, uh, federal Jack and, uh, we're going to, he, he went through it again. He said, nope, there's nothing there. He, he verified that it was the problem. He's going to call a vast tomorrow and uh, deal with them, and he's going to get us re removed from their list of bad, bad websites. But that is why when you go to federaljack.com from Facebook or from Twitter or whatever, and people go, oh, this is a bad link. You're trying to give me a virus, blah, 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 blah. You know, for smart people and for people that are enlightened, reacting – like that without even putting any thought into it after i've said a thousand times that we get blocked we get attacked it's there's no viruses it's almost like people don't listen when you speak and uh, i i have to admit it gets a little frustrating because i'm tired of seeing the same comments oh this site is bad blah 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 blah. it's got viruses the site's not bad okay we get attacked obviously for the information that we put forth so if you get a warning saying Federal Jack is going to give you a virus, it's not true, okay? And just email me. Don't just assume that it is. You know, to the people out there that maybe you guys don't know my site very well or you, you haven't listened to my show or whatever, and maybe you hear this broadcast in the future, the site isn't filled with malware. There's no viruses. It's not up there to steal any of your information. It's just an archive of information that's updated. Uh, pretty much daily. Once in a while, I'll take a day off if I need to for something, but normally I work seven days a week and I update it, uh, with, even if it's only one or two articles. And uh, it, it's filled. It's huge. It's this huge, huge, huge archive of information. Now, gee, I wonder why somebody wouldn't want you to go look. I, I wonder why they would want you to label it a bad website and move on because most people, you know, oh, well, my... My virus stuff, it told me that it's a bad website, so I trust it. I'm never going to go there. I'll have to mark that federaljack.com. They're a bad bunch of people. They're, they're probably trying to steal my stuff or my identity or whatever or put a virus on my computer. That's what they want people to think because maybe the people that aren't awake to what's going on yet, maybe if they stumbled upon my website, they would wake up. So it's just another way to push censorship. And I've been dealing with this, the whole censorship uh, thing of my website for years and I've been talking about it and I've made video numerous YouTube videos about it, even going back like two years ago. And I, I try not to bitch and moan about it too much, but I'm just getting a little frustrated because they, it, it does, it is effective at censoring uh, uh, us at times. And it just gets frustrating when you hear people uh, constantly say, Oh, the site's bad. The site's this, I'm getting this warning. I'm getting that warning. And uh, I know that there's nothing on there, and it's it, you know it's hard for me to try to 
explain it a thousand times over and over again because after a while I get tired of explaining the same thing. And I, I can't assume that everybody is going to see the comment on, on one post or anything like that or even a post where I put it up. Not everybody's going to, you know, if you have 7,000 or 8,000 people following you on Facebook, not everybody's going to see it all at once. So I just wanted to address that really quick. There is no viruses. Federal Jack is virus-free. The site is very user-friendly and open for business. Go use it. It's all yours, all for free. That's why I do it, ladies and gentlemen. All right, we're going to break. We'll be right back. When we come back, I'm going to be ripping on a few things. So stay tuned. Ladies and gentlemen, I want to clear up a little misconception really quick before we get into the news. The interview with Judith on Sunday is not a previous aired interview. It's not something any of you have ever heard. I know I an aired an interview in December. I think it was the 7th, if I remember correctly, uh, December 7th with her. And we talked about cancer as a bioweapon and her work and everything else. It was the second interview the, the, out of the three that I've done with her. Uh, the first one was the, the big one that we released in July and then followed up with the one in December. But I did another interview with her after that. I actually interviewed her. Uh, the one that got aired in December was actually recorded on Thanksgiving Day. And then this one was recorded uh, probably about a week before, within a week of Christmas. I forget the exact date, but it was within a week of Christmas that we recorded it. And then I just, I, it took me so long to edit it. And because I had to take a little bit of time off because I wasn't able to um, do any editing and, and I had to take a little bit of time off of uh, even Federal Jack. If you remember, there was a couple weeks where it was really slow on the site. It's because I had an issue and I wasn't able to use my hand at all. So I wasn't able to do any of the work. I'm the only one that does it. So it kind of put me behind the eight ball. But long story short, I pushed myself because I wanted to get this out because people need to hear this interview with her because it's just amazing. And she gives out some key information. And it's going to be the last interview with her until 2013. And I wanted to make sure that it got aired. So, uh, yes, it is an uh, unheard or I should say never before heard interview with her. It's six hours of Judith that you've never, ever heard. I promise. We don't really go over things that we've already gone over because Judith doesn't like to repeat herself a hundred times and neither do I. So I I, I asked her some key questions. We went into a few things that I had never asked her. And, uh, you know, I actually listened to my first two interviews with her and I went back and uh, I wrote questions down that I hadn't asked the first two times. And I, w- and I went back when I asked her these questions. There's a, a, a few things I wanted to uh, cover. So it, it, it's really just a really good interview. And I, like I said, it's nothing that you guys have heard before. It's not a rebroad or anything. I don't do that. I haven't run a rebroad. And I've been on over a year now and I haven't run a rebroad once. I've, uh, I, if I'm not here, I either give you guys a pre recorded show or in the case where I had to go to the hospital in the middle of the show and I got bit by a spider a couple months back, Joe and Timmy came on. So, no, there is no rebroad, nothing. It is 100% brand new, original, Orion Talk Radio exclusive interview with Judith Ferry Baker. So, tune in Sunday. It's going to be awesome. All right, I want to get into the news. I want to get into the news because it's been a very busy news week since Sunday. It's just been, uh, I guess, if you're in the talk radio biz or if you, you know, I don't want to say biz because we don't get paid for it, but if you if you do this, it's it's been a very. Um, uh, busy week, I guess is the way to put it, in the news. So let's get into one of the first things that I know no one's going to talk about. You won't see this on CNN or MSNBC, and I'm sure you're not going to see this on Fox News. But Michael Scheuer, former head of the Bin Laden unit, he's been on Fox News multiple times. They used to have him on all the time. Uh, he actually hasn't been on in probably about six or seven weeks now. And a, I, I don't know exactly where it was, but this local... Um, I, get, I, want, I don't want to call him reporter because people are going to think like CBS. Let's say independent journalist because that actually – that I can respect. So we'll say this local independent journalist, wherever Scheuer happened to be at the time, whether he was giving a conference or it was in the area where he lives, he went and talked to him. And he has this 45-second interview with him that, with this clip from the, the conversation he had with him, and he threw it up on uh, YouTube. And uh, I put it on um, federaljack.com under the title, Michael Scheuer comments on his absence from Fox News. Now, 
It's only 45 seconds, and I know it was recorded with you know, a camera with, without a boom mic, so it's, it, there's some background noise. But listen to what he says. And it, it's very interesting because, remember, this is the guy that's come out in the past couple of months and been saying, look, Israel is one of our biggest problems right now you know, when it comes to our foreign policy and us fighting wars on their behalf. And, and not even the, 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 the people of Israel, but people, just the leaders like Netanyahu. You actually news today. His military chief is is kind of going against what he's saying, and he, even the military chief is saying, "Yeah, Iran doesn't have any nukes right now." So there's there's infighting. It's it's not the whole country or the whole group of people. It's this inner cabal that controls things. Just like not every American wants to nuke everybody or kill everybody. I know some really good people in this country that don't want war and don't want any of that. But you have a hijacked government. And unfortunately, our government is controlled by the same people that control their government and others. Okay, okay. I'm getting, I'm digressing a little bit. I want to play this clip. So here, here's Michael Scheuer on why you haven't seen him on Fox News. Well, it's, it's nothing, nothing I can really confirm, but I was being on uh, Fox for, I don't know, three, four times a week for a couple of years. And then I gave a couple of speeches, one in New York, um, uh, one in another city, I don't remember exactly where, in favor of Dr. Paul. And um, since then, I haven't been on now, I think in about six or seven weeks, uh, haven't heard a word from them. And I can only assume that the support for Dr. Paul, my criticism of our relationship with the Israelis and... Um, I did suggest that Fox ought to have a program with people like John Bolton and Charles Krauthammer explaining to Americans why we need more wars and why we need more dead kids. Uh, so I think that probably put a uh, crimp in my career at Fox. Wow. There you go, right from Michael Scheuer's mouth. His stance on the truth, him doing the right thing and talking about it, and, you know, he, it's not just Fox. He, he's been on CNN, too. He actually schooled one of the CNN anchors on CNN live and told her that she was carrying the water for Mr. Obama, if I remember correctly, is exactly how he uh, worded it, because she was he, he was trying to you know come out with facts and she was trying to do, you know, do what they do best, um, change things around, put the spin on it and uh, try to get the listener confused and to believe what they want them to believe, not what the guest, Michael Scheuer, was saying. And he schooled her on air, too, and he, I haven't seen him on CNN or MSNBC since, but after that, he was on Fox multiple times. And, uh, and uh, probably because the, he you know, had this quote-unquote, I, I don't want to say anti-Obama stance, but he has this... Um, you know, he t if you say anything bad about a a a Obama, you'll be on Fox being interviewed because they play that role of we're the conservatives and that's who we play to. Just like if you talked bad about Bush, you'd get invited onto MSNBC or CNN back when, the when Bush was the president. And then Fox News would be doing all the defending. And then as soon as Obama came into power, every you know, everybody switched. Fox News took over MSNBC's role. MSNBC switched with Fox, and now they defend the president. It's a joke. So you can see it's all a joke. And obviously, Scheuer talks about real issues. He says, hey, look, you know, one of the biggest elephants in the room right now is our relationship with Israel and, and our foreign policy. And that's something that needs to be addressed. It's not a lie. It's not something that maybe people feel comfortable addressing because they've been made their whole lives to, to believe uh, that it's, it should be something uncomfortable and you should never talk about it and just whatever. But that's, that, it, that is something that needs to be addressed. And you can see, obviously, the Ron Paul stuff. I mean, if you support Ron Paul in any way, shape, or form on the mainstream media, you're out. And I'm going to get into that, too. I'm going to play a clip. It's, uh, I think it's from Monday night, if I remember correctly. But I want to play it. It's from Rachel Maddow, and I have to – I was surprised when I listened to it. It's, it's a piece of – it's not the whole thing, but it's a, it's a portion of it. And uh, uh, she talks about how Ron Paul won Iowa. And now he won – I think today he won Washington State, if, I, if I'm correct. And I think he won Minnesota too. But no, Dr. Paul can't win. Pay no attention to those wins. It was Ron, Ron, Ron. Not for bombs as I think. We're going to break, we'll break back.
We're back, ladies and gentlemen. I want to play that clip from the Rachel Maddow show. Now, it doesn't mean I think Rachel Maddow is awesome or anything, but I'll give her credit for uh, this one report in this instance. She actually did uh, at least report on the, the facts because I don't see anybody else reporting on them. Although, at the end of the day, she is controlled by the military-industrial complex. After all, she's owned by uh, General Electric and uh, whoever else owns, what is it, Universal's involved in there. And No, Vivendi's not in there, and I think they sold Universal. That's right. Vivendi's a French company. Yeah, see, all these are all these companies, ladies and gentlemen, you should go research them, find out who their directors are, who sits on their, their boards, all this other stuff, who their CEOs are, and you'll see a lot of times there's revolving doors from company to company to company, and these people happen to be CFR members or members of the Trilateral Commission, but see, I'm digressing again. My head is just this huge archive of knowledge swirling around constantly 24-7, so I apologize if I go off the beaten path once in a while. All right, let's get back. Rachel Maddow, quote, unquote, I think Ron Paul just won Iowa. This is from the 23rd, so two days ago. Philadelphia, where there is going to be voting tomorrow, the candidate Ron Paul drew a huge crowd despite driving rain. The campaign says over 4,000 people turned out to hear Ron Paul speak in Philly in the middle of a drenching downpour. So if the main idea here, the main script everybody's reading from here is that Mitt Romney has got it done, it is over. Frankly, there are still things going on on the Republican side that make it seem like it's not done, at least not totally done. Perhaps the most off script thing that has just happened on the Republican side is that I think Ron Paul just won Iowa. Uh, Seriously, this weekend. You'll recall that the Iowa caucuses on the Republican side this year were a bit of a disaster. Uh, Remember what the counting was like that night in January? The numbers we're receiving from the state do not match the numbers we just received from the county chairwoman right here in Clinton County. If these are the what final do you mean numbers, the numbers don't match. Well, I'll, I'll explain it. I'll explain it to you. John, you go ahead and explain it. I'm, the, the, the numbers, Madam Chairwoman, I'm not questioning your numbers. I'm saying the numbers you're giving us now do not match the numbers that the state central committee has reported so far from your county, and they say one precinct is missing. So, if your numbers are that missing precinct, and these are the final numbers from Clinton County, excuse my scribble, but 437, not 386, 354, not 321. We can stop right there. Well, that would make Romney the winner. Romney the winner. And then about 20 minutes after that strange middle of the night moment on CNN, uh, this guy, the state Republican Party chairman in Iowa, uh, officially declared that Mitt Romney had won Iowa. They officially declared Mitt Romney the winner by eight votes, eight votes out of more than 120,000 cast. Congratulations to Governor Mitt Romney, winner of the 2012 Iowa caucuses. Congratulations to Senator Santorum for a very close second place finish in an excellent race here. Don't believe him for a second. Uh, About two weeks after that, the party released final certified results that said that Mitt Romney was not the winner. The Iowa State Republican Party had changed its mind. They said first there was no way to know who won, uh, then that the results should be viewed as a tie, and then they said that actually Rick Santorum had won. It is indisputable that the certified caucus results have Rick Santorum winning by 34 votes. So you're declaring this then uh, a victory for Rick Santorum? Yeah, the certified vote results. Now now you sure know? (laughs) After all of that, after the disastrous vote counting and the disorganization and the chaos and Romney winning and then Santorum winning, the Iowa Republican Party chairman resigned, naturally. And now, now... 16 weeks after the voting happened and Mitt Romney was declared the winner and 14 weeks after Rick Santorum was declared the winner, now it appears that Ron Paul is the winner in Iowa. See, Iowa gets to send a total of 28 delegates to the National Convention in Tampa this summer. One of the delegate seats goes to the new state party chairman who replaced the guy who was the disaster who quit. The new guy is an avowed Ron Paul supporter. So that's one Ron Paul delegate. This weekend, the state nomination committee that picks 13 more of the delegates, that committee was taken over by a majority of Ron Paul supporters, which means Ron Paul has just locked up at least half of Iowa's delegates. These 13 plus 14 in the form of the state party chairman, 14 of the 28 delegates, half the delegates are his. He will not get less than half. So Ron Paul either wins Iowa or worst case scenario, he ties for first place. 
And while we're on the subject, looks like Ron Paul just won Minnesota, too. Minnesota has 40 delegates total. This weekend, Ron Paul won 20 of them. Now, not all the rest of Minnesota's 40 delegates have been allocated yet, but with half of them locked up, Ron Paul cannot come in worse than first. Worst case scenario, Ron Paul ties for first place in Minnesota. Anything better than that, he wins outright. And it should be noted, he warned us this was going to happen. Thank you very much. When the dust settles, I think there's a very good chance that we're going to have the maximum number of delegates coming out of Minnesota. <laughs> Ron Paul was right. Nobody is getting more delegates than he did in Minnesota or in Iowa or in wherever else this Ron Paul delegate strategy of his pays off. The main plot of the Republican nominating process remains mostly on script. Mitt Romney appears to be buttoning up the nomination, but it is not tidy. Want one more example? Uh, this weekend in Texas, Texas Republicans met in their Senate district party conventions, whatever those are, uh, and this was no coronation for Mr. Romney, even though everybody thinks he's got it done. I mean, forget the Beltway media narrative here. Forget the main script. The Ron Paul supporters in Texas were marching this weekend under the banner of Warren G. Harding. They're citing the Warren G. Harding strategy of 1920. In 1920, Warren G. Harding went into the Republican National Convention with the fewest delegates of all the surviving candidates, and Warren G. Harding walked out with the nomination. He won on the 10th ballot. And if it worked 92 years ago for the man who would become our 29th president, couldn't it work now? If the Republican Party keeps this race as chaotic as it has... There you go. I'm not going to play the rest of the clip, but because she sits and, and she gets into the, she pushes the whole left-right thing again. But there you go. So just a little more proof that, first of all, Ron Paul can win. That's a load of crap, okay? I can't stand when people say that. He can win. If those losers can win, then he can win. We just have to push it. And I'm not saying, again, I don't think he's a superhero. I don't think he'd come in laying on the White House lawn in January and with a cape on and everything would be fixed. That's just not reality by any means. Uh, I don't know if you guys heard the Marine go off, but this guy, he's, um, this was at the uh, Missouri RNC D3 convention, and this, this guy just goes off. Check this out. I want to play this before we go to break because this, this coincides with this. Check, check out what this guy has to say. Combat vet. Who has not had an opportunity? You go to the gentleman back here. Please identify. Let's get a microphone to you. Mr. Chairman, good afternoon. I'm Major Christopher Miller of St. Charles County, United States Marine Corps, retired. I just served 27 years in the Marine Corps, retired less than a year ago, and moved here to Missouri. I've served multiple combat tours as an explosive ordnance disposal officer, disarming bombs and leading bomb disposal technicians in combat. I'm tired of these wars. Our Marine Corps is tired of these wars. The whole armed services are tired of these wars, and we're tired of these so-called Republicans and so-called Democrats that give us the same garbage who are no different from one another. We are tired of Ron Paul is the only candidate who represents any change. We are tired of the Obama change, and the Obama care, and all the other Obama garbage. I do not believe that Mr. Romney, Governor Romney, is going to give us anything else than more Obama garbage. And he just randomly got up there. It was like at the end they were saying, hey, you know, we're going to have to close comments, blah, 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 blah. Is there anybody else that didn't get a chance to speak? And this Marine Corps vet, devil dog goes up there, speaks his mind. And he got a standing ovation. The entire audience stood up. Everybody stood up and was clapping. You heard it. 
See, the truth resonates with people when they hear it. We've had enough war, enough death, and unfortunately, there's only one man that's going against war, and that's Dr. Ron Paul. So, if you're going to vote, might as well vote for him. If you're going to do it, vote for him. See what happens. What's the worst that can happen? We are back, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, you know, a couple weeks ago, even further than that, but a couple weeks ago, uh, not even, I think a, a week ago, I said on air that if anybody uh, had anything that they wanted to get out about the BP oil spill or anything, to email me or contact me. And um, <clears throat> I've gotten one or two very short emails, but nobody has really contacted me. Now, I know you listen. I know you hear the show. I know that there are people out there in Louisiana and Mississippi and the, the, the uh, Florida panhandle that are affected by this that listen to the show. I know you guys are there. I know for a fact that you guys hear the show. So if you know someone that's sick, if you know, if you have some evidence or whatever, I will do a special two-hour show and, you know, all about it. We can bring on a couple people. We can have a couple different witnesses, whatever. But we need to get this information out. I mean, the general public thinks the BP oil spill is over. Some people are awake, but there's a large contingent of people that have no idea as to what's going on. So, again, email me, contact DTRH at yahoo.com, contact DTRH. RH at yahoo.com or hit me up on Facebook, Fed Jack. And uh, <clears throat> it's a fan page. You can see it F E D space J A C K. But uh, email me uh, or uh, leave a comment on the, the, the page, uh, the front uh, page of Federal Jack. But I prefer you email me because it's much easier. And uh, I, I want to get people on, I want to get the truth out. There, there's nothing to be scared of. What are you scared of, BP? They're killing you. So, like, what do you care if they threaten you, if that's the case? I don't know. But dude, people shouldn't be afraid of these people. That's why I want to give you guys a platform to get your voice out. And you, <laughs> you don't have to be afraid of them here. No corporate sponsors here. And if BP walked in, you know, if we were in a room physically – and BP walked in, we would just lock the door and hand out baseball bats. So, trust me, there is no love for BP here. Now, that leads me to this uh, clip from CBS News I want to play really quick. Two years on, Gulf Coast fishermen are catching fish with abnormalities, massive abnormalities that no one's ever seen before. Now, this was, this was said that this was going to happen, <clears throat> that the... Uh, Gulf was going to be destroyed. Things were going to be changed forever. Nothing was ever going to be the same. Yet BP and our federal government would have you believe that everything's okay. The oil's gone. The corrects it. It's not still out there. All that oil on the bottom of the ocean, that's not from BP. We don't know where that's coming from, but that's certainly not from the oil leak. All these fish and everything else getting mutated and dolphins dying all over the world. Nope, it's got nothing to do with it. Nothing to do with all the chemicals that we dumped into the water. And people buy that crap. People actually believe that. That's probably the most frustrating part. All right, let me play you this clip. I want you to hear for yourselves. Uh, it, it's surprising that the mainstream media is covering it, but, I mean, the facts are the facts. They, it's happening, and they have to. This is not something you can cover up when you have all these fishermen coming out. They'd probably like to. And I'm sure they'll put their spit on it. But here, check it out. The price of gas has dropped for the first time this year. A new report from the Lundberg survey shows the average price for a gallon of regular is three ninety one. That's a drop of five cents since two weeks ago. Gas prices have been climbing steadily since December. It has been two years since America's search for oil triggered one of the biggest environmental disasters in the country. The Gulf oil spill killed 11 oil rig workers. It also caused a lot of damage to the Gulf's marine and wildlife, as well as the fishing and tourism industry. As Elaine Quijano shows you, researchers are starting to see the long-term effects of the spill. 
Troy Frady runs a charter fishing boat off the Alabama Gulf Coast. Since the oil spill, he's been worried about some of the red snapper he's catching. One to two percent of the fish had these huge lesions on them and fin rot, and we've never seen that before. Researchers at the University of Florida are trying to determine what's causing the problem. You can't spill that much oil into a system without having long-term negative consequences. David Muth is with the advocacy group, the National Wildlife Federation. He took us to an island where weeks after the spill, pelicans were covered with oil. Muth says oil is suffocating mangroves holding the soil in place. It was four acres before. How big is the island now? It's less than an acre. 75% loss uh, of the island since, since the spill. What do you think this will look like in another two years? Gone. Completely gone. Completely gone. Two years later, the oil is still here in some parts of these marshlands. You can actually see it in places in these tar patches. And in other areas, the ground is so saturated, you can actually see the oil bubbling up from the ground. Penn State scientists say this dead coral contained the chemical fingerprint of the BP oil. The red you see are starfish. Dolphins also show signs of distress. Last year in Louisiana, federal researchers say 179 dolphins were stranded, nearly eight times the average. It's not clear whether the oil played a role. BP has spent $14 billion on environmental cleanup, and in a statement told us there is work still to be done, and any and all conclusions about the health of the Gulf should be based on responsible science. The Food and Drug Administration says it has extensively tested Gulf seafood and it's safe to eat. But fisherman Troy Frady believes the Gulf is still struggling. It's going to take many years of restoration in the Gulf of Mexico to get it back to where it's healthy. BP says it's committed to the largest and most complex study of the Gulf ever done. It's a study with high stakes for all involved. Elaine Quijano, CBS News, Baratari. Yeah, but you know... What they don't talk about is the people getting sick. The, what is it called? The, I think they called it the blue flu or something like that. See, this is why I want to get somebody on from the area to talk about this because I know a little bit about it, but I don't know enough that uh, I could sit and, and go off for two hours about it and give everybody the information that they need to know. Whereas there are plenty of people out there that do know what's going on and I would love to bring them on my show and give them the opportunity to talk about this and go over this and discuss this because this needs to be exposed. BP is absolutely disgusting, and the federal government and anybody in it that took part in this cover-up is absolutely disgusting. They're destroying the planet. They're literally screwing with the ecosystem. You, the ocean is very important. That gulf coast area that whole region that whole thing was very important and they've killed everything they've killed life as you know it in there in that entire gulf they've killed it look at all the disper the dispersants they've dropped and all the oil that's still in there the crap that's mixed together and you know they it's like a big science experiment big chemistry set out there and the people and the animals and the, the all the life in that area are going to be the guinea pigs <clears throat> and these people that cause this they don't live there do you think they care there's more to this and I, you know this the whole bp thing has gotten pretty much swept under the rug you only see one once in a while a little uh news maybe three or four minute newscast like that about the bp oil spill and about something that's going on and that's it never do you really hear anything uh in any way shape or form even remotely close to the way it was when the oil spill first happened in the first six months. You don't hear anything remotely close to it. So I want to do at least one show, if not more, discussing this. Look, if I had 20 or 30 people messaging me and saying, hey, man, we'd come on, you know, I can come on for two hours, you know, this person could come on for two hours, and they could individually do two hours, I would do show after show about it. I would, you know, once a week we'd do a BP oil spill show for a couple of weeks if we had to to get everybody on. Would not bother me at all. I would love to do it. I'd be honored to do it. But I need people to be brave enough to stand up and tell the truth to the rest of the country. You know, if you think you're being ignored, you're not being, you might be being, you're being ignored by the mainstream media, but there are 
people out there like myself that do care and want to help you get the message out. So contact us, and we will do so. Contact Joe Joseph over at the Freedom Link Radio. He'll help you. Contact Bob Tuscan. I'm sure Bob will have you on as a guest. You know, we'll all <clears throat> coordinate. This is something that needs to be brought back up. There are people getting sick from all of the uh, dispersants and all the other crap that's out there in the water. There's people that are really, really getting sick, like bad. Dying. I don't even know if there's... I, I have to find the one YouTube channel, but for a while, <clears throat> on one of my other channels, that got eradicated, and that's why I have to try to... I can't remember what the, the name of it is. There was this one female BP worker, or a cleanup worker, that she was recording her and all of her friends that were uh, workers and cleanup workers on YouTube. She was recording their health every day from the exposure to all that crap. And you could see the slow, pro well, well, not even slow. You could see the the somewhat fast progression, I guess, of, uh, of what this stuff was doing to them. And they were getting sick, lesions, all this stuff all over them. Kendra Arnison's another one. She was outspoken. She did videos and stuff. This stuff is happening, ladies and gentlemen. We need to discuss it. We need to talk about it and expose it. All right. First hour's up. Second hour coming up. Don't go anywhere. We'll be back in a few minutes. Ladies and gentlemen, we are back with hour number two on tonight's live edition of Down the Rabbit Hole. I'm your host, Popeye from FederalJack.com. And before we get back into the news, I want to remind everybody that we are now on Shoutcast. See, there is multiple ways to listen to the Orion Talk Radio Network and all the awesome shows here on the network. Any of us. You want to listen to me, you want to listen to Joe, you want to listen to Ken, Kurt, JJ, any, any, there's a ton of other shows on here. I'd be, I'd have to sit here and list about a hundred people off, but check out the lineup. We have a, a pretty cool lineup. You can hear us multiple ways. Okay. You can go right to oriontalkradio.com website. We have a listen live a player at the top there. Click on that. If uh, a lot of times, like I've said, we're it, we're growing and expanding at so fast that a lot of times the server itself gets bogged down. We've talked about this on air before. So we have a bunch of different places to go. So now we're also streaming from Shoutcast separately. And I've said that we're working on uh, building uh, some really cool Shoutcast players. And we're going to be able – we're going to have it so that people can take them and put them on their own websites and everything else. Anyway – Go to shoutcast.com and just look up uh, Orion Talk Radio, and you'll see us. Uh, it, the genre should be, I think it says political, if I remember correctly. But it says Orion Talk Radio. You can't miss it. Just There's a little play button next to it. Just click play. Boom, comes on. Uh, talk stream live, you can listen to us. And tune in radio, you can listen to us on your phone, your iPhone, your Android phone. Or if you have a, a Roku box, one of those little black boxes that you can stream Netflix and Hulu and stuff to, it also comes with TuneIn as an app for it. And you can listen to us in your house, like through your, your home entertainment center in your living room. So there's a ton of different ways to listen to Orion. And we're working on giving you even more. So we're, we're trying to build the website and make it more user-friendly. So if anybody ever has an issue with... Like if you click on the Listen Live link and for some reason the stream is breaking up or you're, you're – some people, Windows Media Player, I can't stand it myself for, for the most part. And a lot of times people have issues with it. But you don't have to worry about it. Just go to Shoutcast. Shoutcast.com. Look up Orion Talk Radio and bam, just hit play and it's, it's crystal clear and beautiful. We, we had to stream from multiple places because we're growing exponentially because people are starving for the truth because the mainstream media sucks. Okay, that brings me back into my second hour. Now, we all know the mainstream media does not do their job at all. We all know that they are pretty pitiful in doing their job. We always r rank on them and pick on them and uh, say things about them and pick on the, the pundits and everything else. But there is still this mass audience of people that does get their information from the mainstream media. Now, the, the mainstream media, they are dying but we need to not rest on our laurels because, you know, 
we got comfortable or complacent with both we're the alternative media. No, we need to step it up a notch. All of us collectively as the alternative media, we need to step it up a notch. We can't get comfortable with the fact that we're kicking their butts. We have to completely annihilate them. They are a propaganda machine controlled by the new world order or the Illuminati, or the elitists, or the banksters, or whatever you want to call these douchebags that pull the strings and have all this power at the current moment in time, okay? We have to keep pushing ourselves to go one step further and never get complacent because these people don't get complacent, and they are looking for any opportunity they can, and we cannot allow that. So... The alternative media, I, I, I just my 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 uh, my advice is: let's all keep pushing ourselves to keep you know going forward. Don't uh, don't just say, "Well, yeah, we're I'm where we are. I'm where I want to be. You know, we're doing good and blah 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 blah." No, always strive to be better because we will keep on winning these battles, these information battles, and getting the information out and waking people up. Whereas if we get complacent. When I was a firefighter, we used to say complacency kills. So, all right. <sighs> this brings me to a piece of news, which is just the exact example why I don't have children. And I think uh, Kurt talked about this the other day on his show. And this is just, again, the reason I don't have children. If I had kids... And someone did this. I've said this on air. Someone hurt my kids. Someone treated my kid uh, very badly or, or injured them or mentally caused them anguish. It would end very badly for the person that caused them that anguish or hurt them. So I don't have children. And with every all the craziness in the world that's going on, it's just too crazy of a place. But, uh, you know, with everything that's going on, with the, you know, the, the elitists trying to do their thing, social engineering, everything, you know, crap in the, the water and food and everything else. This poor guy, this family, uh, this guy has a, um, uh, a special needs child and he sends his kid. I think the kids, uh, I, I think he's autistic, but they'll, you'll hear it in the clip. They, they say what he's got, but he, he sends him to school and he, he noticed his, his kids, you know, having some, some issues. He notices there's things wrong, you know, some different stuff. Long story short, he straps a bug to his kid and he comes to find out that the teachers and the teacher, the teacher and the teacher's aide are pretty much tormenting his child at school. So this is the, this is the, um, the culture. This is just one more indicator of there is a problem and we need to fix it. I've talked about this before. That's why I like, I, I like to expose stuff like this because it, it, it is a prime example that there's a problem. Check it out. Ten-year-old Akian Chaffetz was diagnosed with autism seven years ago, his father says. But Stu Chaffetz says his son's biggest struggle now isn't his condition, but bullying by the classroom staff entrusted to care for him. He's documented the bullying in a very public way online, hoping, he says, that other children won't suffer the same cruelty. Chaffetz says problems started this year when he was told his son had punched a teacher and an aide. And I have never seen him hit anybody. Um, that just didn't make any sense. Frustrated by a lack of answers, Chaffetz put a recording device in his son's pocket during the school day. He was horrified to hear what was on it. Oh, boy. What was your reaction when you first heard that tape? Well, when I, that night, when I started listening to it, I, I, I just shattered inside. More than six hours were recorded. Chaffetz says the toughest part was listening to Akian ask if he could see his father. My son, um, when he transitions back from his mom and I, he lives with me full time, he, he just has a little natural anxiety. He says, may I see dad after mom, which is his way of asking to be reassured he's coming back home. Chaffetz says he went immediately to his son's Cherry Hill School and credits administrators with acting quickly. In a statement, the school superintendent said 
In February, upon receiving a copy of an audio recording, the district undertook a thorough and rigorous investigation and responded swiftly and appropriately. She said there were specifics she couldn't legally address, adding, I want to assure our parents that the individuals who were heard on the recording raising their voices and inappropriately addressing children no longer work in the district. Well, Chaffetz says he felt he had no choice but to go public. Every child is worthy of defense and respect and that no one deserves to be treated with cruelty and to be humiliated and that we need we who can speak for them need to stop it by changing the law by exposing people who bully kids and by publicly shaming them now that's the father now i'm sure that the news is going to use this as a way to push for anti-bullying laws as a whole because there's this huge push for anti-bullying which is just a way of taking away free speech under the guise of trying to protect people you want to protect people from bullying give them some solid advice i'll give it to you right now if you're being bullied and you're listening to this broadcast kick the shit out of the bully he'll leave you alone there's your sound advice we're going to break we'll bring it back we are back now when we were going to break i said that how to deal with a bully one way to deal with him is to kick his ass and be done with it and people are going to say to me i know i can hear it now i'm going to get emails on this because this is the kind of thing i get emails about popeye are you pushing violence i thought you weren't like that no i'm not pushing violence as mark passio and i have talked about before there's a difference between self-defense and violence okay if you're being picked on relentlessly by a big bully Sometimes the only thing a bully responds to is getting his ass handed to him. I speak from personal experience when I was a child. Okay? I handled plenty of them myself. And you know what? I was better off when I smacked them around than I was if I tried nonviolent conflict resolution or whatever they call it nowadays. I don't think that's what they call it in schools. Okay? And again, I'm, I'm, I'm not about beating the crap out of everybody and just walking around and you know being a bully yourself but if someone comes at you physically and puts hands on you you got to do what you got to do and i'm gonna tell you what you whoop a bully's ass once they're not going to come back for round two they don't want to deal with it okay it's over a lot of times they end up respecting you and you end up becoming friends i know it's weird but it happens now people need to first of all if you want to deal with bullying, they don't teach you how to deal with it properly. They, we need a law to prevent it because laws will stop it. No, I don't see anybody out there talking about how uh, give the kid the, the self-empowerment so that he can deflect that negative energy. Teach the kid a little bit of logic and knowledge and a, little, a better way of understanding it. Don't look at it like I'm bad because this person says that I'm a loser because I don't look a certain way or I don't dress a certain way or I'm, I'm gay or I'm, I'm whatever, I'm a geek or I play Dungeons and Dragons or whatever, okay? Whatever, whatever they make fun of you for. You know, most of these people that bully, I'm going to give a little advice on bullying, okay? Because I'm tired of the false crap bullying advice that they, oh, we need laws. No, you just need to tell people things like this. Most, of, most bullies are picked on and feel inadequate themselves, okay? And the reason they bully is because they have an issue, uh, whatever the underlying issue is. And a lot of times they're... They, they're you know picked on by somebody, maybe an older brother at home, maybe their father beats them, whatever the case may be. Maybe the mother is a, is a putz to them, whatever. Okay, This person has a low self-esteem and a low view of themselves. And what they do is they take what they dislike about themselves, and we do this in, throughout our entire life, in big situations, little situations. Okay? They project it onto you and attack it. And by picking on you and picking on someone that they feel is maybe uh, a geek or is strange or whatever, it, it makes them feel better about themselves because they can try to point out your negative stuff rather than 
address their own problems and just deal with it. And this happens throughout life. Okay, as kids are going to get older, they're going to realize that this is this happens throughout life. Okay, in situations that throughout your whole life, you're going to run into this. Okay, so bullying when you're a child is uh, a good form of boot camp, I guess, to learn if you're if you're taught the proper way to deal with it, rather than you know curl up into a ball and who oh, don't touch me. That's one of the biggest reasons why you have kids committing suicide. You know, I bet you they wouldn't commit suicide if you'd let him punch the loudmouth bully in the mouth and kick his ass, okay? They're, kids are cruel no matter what. It doesn't matter what the ob, whatever the case may be, whether they're picking on the kid again because he's, you know, for whatever case, it doesn't matter. They, they, they could, uh, uh, a myriad of reasons that they, they could find, the kids could find to be cruel to one another. Little kids are are dirt bags to each other for a lack of a better term we're really mean to each other when we're children we we are and a lot of that comes from how we're brought up we interact with each other very you know a lot of it's hormones a lot of it's you know king of the mountain type crap but if the parents t teach the child a self to you know always defend yourself never stop my mom used to teach me don't start a fight but finish it you know what i'm saying don't be a human punching bag don't just stand in and let them beat you up because going to the teachers doesn't help. That's like – that's the equivalent of when they grow up and they're, they're standing there getting stabbed in the stomach and they're screaming, help, police, help, police, help. I'm being stabbed and there's no cops around. You have to learn to be able to defend yourself if you have to, okay, in whatever situation. So <clears throat> back to bullying. If you're getting picked on, whatever, you have to understand the mindset of the people that are picking on you and why they're saying the things to you. Look at it with some logic. You should actually feel pity for them because bullies are really pathetic. Anybody that spends most of their time trying to find the negative stuff about somebody else without focusing anything about themselves isn't truly living. So don't take what they have to say. Take what they have to say with a grain of salt. Who cares? Seriously. Who cares if some, some preppy douchebag tells you that you don't wear the right clothes? Who cares if some jock picks on you? Or who cares if people pick on you because you're gay? Or whatever the case may be, because I see a lot of these suicides where kids are gay and they get picked on. And You know what? Kids are just – little kids, teenagers are pieces of crap. Okay, Empower your children to feel good about themselves and give them the tools that they need – to defend themselves from this kind of crap. My mother did with me. My mother always said to me, you know, don't don't be a bully. Don't you start a fight, but you better, you know, don't – I don't want you coming home with a broken nose. You defend yourself. You know, I don't care what – she told me flat out, I don't care what the school says. They could suspend you for all I care. If you were defending yourself, you won't be in any trouble with me, and that's the only thing you have to worry about. I'm your mother. And you know what? She was right. Because when I got older, I don't run around – trying to call people up, come defend me, and I, I feel scared, blah, blah, blah. My mom taught me how to, my, my mom let me uh, learn how to defend myself. She taught me, she gave me that drive to defend myself. She gave me that drive to take care of things myself. And it's not only about self-defense. See, all of this is related. Let's dovetail it into something else, personal accountability. I talk about it all the time. If you're not willing to defend yourself from a physical attack, a bully, if a bully comes up and is hitting you and you curl up into a ball and just let him hit you, if you're not willing to defend yourself at that basic level, how are you supposed to be able to think with any type of common sense and not be led around by the nose? You will always look for an outside source to come solve your problems. You always need some outside agency when you get older to come you know, rescue you. You will never be able to handle things by yourself because from the time you're a child, you're taught to not handle things. You're taught to curl up into a ball you know, in, 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 in any time you're threatened. That's programming. That's what education is. Stand up to the bully. It will empower you. When you get older, you'll be like me maybe and you'll stand up and you'll tell the new world order. Well, hopefully by the time – if any kids ever hear this, if teenagers hear it, hopefully by the time you guys are adults, there won't be anything called the Illuminati. It'll be a history lesson because they'll all be swinging from ropes. But uh, one can only dream, right? Uh, honestly, it, it, it's it's a, it's inevitable. Within the next 20 years, things are going to be completely different. Hopefully people will look at things differently and there won't be bullying anymore and picking on things. 
You know, the kid, but kids have always done it. When I was a kid, kids were jerk offs. I'm sure kids are even worse now because there's YouTube and Facebook and Twitter. I can only freaking imagine. So, yeah, I'm sure there's a lot of peer pressure, but uh, r responsible parents should teach their kids to, if they have to, defend themselves, uh, do what they got to do, and, uh, uh, you know, not. Teach them self empowerment. Teach them about the ego. Let them learn the idea of the false ego and everything else. Look, if your kid is smart enough to work an iPad and do a PowerPoint presentation by the time they're 11, I'm sure they can understand the concept of the false ego. They can understand all this stuff, and they can understand how when they look at a bully like that, they'll they'll feel bad for the person that's bullying them. They'll feel a little higher up and enlightened. Or at least teach him to kick the shit out of the guy. One of the two. All right, we're going to break. I hope I clarified that enough with my rambling. And no, when I say that you should defend yourselves, when I say that people should stand up to bullies, I don't mean that people should uh, walk into schools with weapons or anything like that. See, that is actually a symptom of them being repressed. See, these kids are being taught to repress, not all these school shootings. I know a lot of them are hinky, but the ones where a kid gets caught bringing a gun to school or something or a knife, and it's always the same thing. Why'd you bring it? Well, I was being picked on, and, you know, he didn't know what else to do. And in most of the cases, I guarantee you, if you research it, the kid went to the parent, went to the, the school administrator, went to somebody and reached out for help because they teach these kids that's what you're supposed to do rather than handle business, Okay. And I'm not saying that violence is the answer, but if somebody's physically assaulting you, again, just standing there and taking it after a while, that that builds up inside of you. And then these kids bring a, a you know, some sort of weapon to school. And even if they don't shoot anybody, a lot of times the ones that are only doing it because, you know, a lot of times the ones that do shoot, again, hinky situations. But some of them, yes, there really is. The kid just lost it. And Why? Because he, you, you train the kid from the time he's a little kid or her to reach out for help. And then when the person does it, you kick them in the teeth. <laughs> does that make any sense to anybody? No. And then if you do give them advice, you give them the wrong advice. You don't help them at all. Look, the best advice I can give to anybody that ever gets bullied is who cares what somebody else thinks about you. Honestly, I don't. I don't care. I am covered in tattoos. I've had people tell me I'm ugly because of my tattoos. I've been told I'm going to burn in hell because of my tattoos. You know what? I don't care. I don't care. Whatever. I understand that I am infinite consciousness and that, like Bill Hicks said, this is just a ride. And for this ride, this vessel I'm in, this body, is my car. And I'll give it the paint job that I want. I'll make it look like I want. I don't care what anybody else thinks. It's the attitude you need to have. Who cares if somebody says, oh, you're fat. You know what? Maybe, maybe you are a little overweight. But you know what? Do something about it. I was a fat kid. You know what I did? I got encouraged because people used to make fun of my weight. You know what I did? I lost weight. And I got in shape and I started working out. And when I was fat, I still was able to hold my own. But once I, what they, once I took away that, once I got in shape, then they didn't have any, they, they couldn't say, oh, you're a fat guy. They couldn't say, hey, fat kid, what, what are they going to say to you? Hey, you used to be fat kid? No, use it as an inspiration to get in shape and then really kick the crap out of them. You know, maybe, maybe, uh, maybe uh, one of them is a jock or something. Maybe you lose the weight, you end up going on the football field, and then you end up roughing him up on the football field, or you end up besting him, and you end up being better than him and showing him up, you know, one-upping him. Who knows? You sometimes use it as an inspiration. But who really cares if somebody says, oh, I don't like the way you dress or I don't like the music you listen to? But who cares? Who are you? If someone says, I don't like what you like, you're a nerd. You just tell them, well, I don't like what you like. You're a douchebag. Who cares what you think? Who are you? Well, I'm so-and-so. My dad is so-and-so. Who cares? Ego trip. Don't let that stuff bother you. And the best advice I could give to kids that are getting picked on, and then I'll move on, is honestly, 98% of the people that you go to high school with, you're never going to see again in life until later on, if you get an invite to your high school reunion and they don't think you're dead for some, for some weird reason or, or another. So who cares? Who really cares? Don't let those people mold you and make you who you are. 
Okay, follow your own path, be your own individual, and screw what other people think. You do what is right for you. As long as you're not violating someone's natural rights and their natural law, it doesn't matter what anybody else thinks or what society thinks about the way you dress or whatever. As long as you're not doing anything to violate anybody's natural law, F everybody else, okay? Who cares what they think? Don't let that stuff bother you. Stop letting people dictate your journey for you. And by no means cut your journey short because of some other loser's shortcomings and their negativity being thrust upon you. Don't do that at all. Stay strong. Believe me, these people, most of the people that are bullies end up being the world's biggest losers later on in life. So trust me, karma's a bitch. All right, moving on. I spent enough time on it. <clears throat> yes, I have a weird way of... Uh, Giving advice, I guess, but like Popeye, the uh, cartoon character, used to say, "I am what I am," and I don't like to. Uh, I don't like to mince words. There's no point in, in in giving a kid, you know, oh well, you know, you should, you should try to maybe talk to him and find out why the person doesn't like you. Look, if someone's swinging on you and hurting you or physically attacking you, you must protect yourself. And when you get older, if you're not taught when you're a child that you should, you know, it's it's natural to protect yourself and that's what you're supposed to do. When you get older, you won't protect yourself and you'll allow things to, and, and people, you know, allow things to happen and, and uh, people to trample all over you in one way or another. A lot of the quote-unquote training we get when we're children affects how we are later on in life. You know, my mother was big on constitutional rights and all that stuff. She didn't like the U.N., used to say the UN was defunct. I said all the time, if she were still alive now, it'd be a very interesting conversation because I think she would be uh, very much awake. But she instilled things in me to, you know, be a better person, help people out, always make sure if you see someone in need, you do the right thing. Don't just, uh, you know, if you see someone in the street, don't just, if in their lane they're bleeding, uh, you know, and they're dying. Don't just walk by. Do the right thing. You know, a lot of people, I don't want to get involved, blah, 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 blah. You know how many times I've stopped because I've seen accidents happen, witnessed them, and I've pulled over. <clears throat> I I mentioned this one on, one time on air. I, I held pressure on a girl's foot the entire time until the paramedics came and everything, and then we'd load her in the ambulance, and I kind of just snuck away, got back into my truck, and went back and left. I didn't give him my name. I didn't want to give him, you know, hey, this is, you know, I won an award. I'm citizen of the year. I just did what was right. And then when I was done, I'm out. That's the way things should be done. People need to do the right thing. Volunteerism. Volunteerism. I say it all the time. You want to get rid of these big bureaucracies? You want to get rid of all these... You know, you want to get rid of uh, uh, the huge police departments with tanks and SWAT teams, and you want to get rid of all these government agencies. But people say, well, wh who's going to do this or who's going to do that? This agency can't do it or this agency can't do it. Then you form a one central agency that can handle certain tasks and make a volunteer. Police departments make up a, a volunteer police department, you know, or it, it's not that hard. I mean, I was a volunteer fireman. You give the people the training. You get, Let me tell you something. You would have less problems in your town if you had a volunteer police department, right, than you would if you have paid guys from outside that live 30 or 40 miles away that have nothing to do with any of the citizens there and look at it like a job and like they're going out to, quote, unquote, clean up scumbags off the street. Would you rather have that or would you rather have the, the locals uh, doing a, a shift and – Again, you, you do your shift. You, I'm sure they could be compensated like with a uniform allowance or something for whatever clothes, whatever money they had to put out for uniforms and you know training if they paid for training. Like when I was a firefighter, if we paid for training, we paid for it. We took the courses, and if we passed the courses and got the training certificates and everything, we, had, we, um, we graduated from that course at the fire academy. We then took – uh, that certification to the back to the town, and they reimbursed us, but only if we got paid for it, or, or excuse me, only if we passed did we get paid for it. So uh, we we only got paid 
<clears throat> we only got paid if we passed. So it was kind of an incentive to not be a screw off and leave halfway through. Oh, well, the town paid for it. I don't have to show up to this class or whatever. No, you must pass because if you don't, you paid for that out of your pocket. So you had less of a problem with people not showing up for the classes at the fire academy. You could do the same thing with the police academy. Do the same thing, give them uniform. You know, uh, we did a dangerous job. They could do the, the, the same thing, and you wouldn't have this problem because you'd have, you know, Mike, the local, uh, he's a, maybe he, in his off, you know, in his, in his spare time when he's not volunteering as a, you know, police officer for whatever hour shift, he's uh, a school teacher, and he happens to live in town, and he's a school teacher in town. And, you know, he's got a Saturday night shift as a, an officer in the town. Do you think he's going to go around night sticking people and beating the crap out of people and tasering people and shooting, shooting people right there in the street if Monday morning he has to be in the school as a teacher or if Sunday he happens to be off and he's going to be maybe in the coffee shop getting a bagel? Do you think he's going to want to be an asshole, for lack of a better term? No. So you solve the problem of the police brutality. See, instead of reacting with force, let's look at the problem. See, I can do this. <clears throat> let's look at the problem and try to solve it. We are back, ladies and gentlemen. Final segment of tonight's show. Don't forget to check my website out. I'm going to give myself a shameless plug because I never do this. Federaljack.com. Spent a ton of time working on it. Federaljack.com. Go check it out. Make sure you check out the archive page. I know I haven't updated it in like two weeks. Like I said, I've been just super slammed trying to get caught up with stuff. And uh, I actually have updated it. Uh, I've almost got the entire uh, everything up to date, including up to um, uh, what's today? Wednesday. So Sunday show. It's not up there yet. Within the next, I'd say, two or three days, everything will be up to date. So the archive page, check it out over the next the course of the next few days. And all the uh, the last couple shows, the last couple weeks will be up there. And everything else is up there. Um, YouTube channel, DTRH, DTRH Radio Archives, DTRH, short for Down the Rabbit Hole, DTRH Radio Archives, all one word, on YouTube, that is the archive channel, and that's where all the shows get load, uh, uploaded, the newer ones. Some of the older shows are archived over on Federal Jack Tube 6, which is my YouTube channel, but it's only 15-minute videos and shorter that can get uploaded to it right now. Eventually, I will get all the older shows uh, uploaded to the archive channel as well, but I'm trying not to... Um, I try to. I, I want to do it slowly because I don't want to drown out the newer ones, because of the new YouTube channel design. Because it sucks. Which, by the way, I've said this on air before, and I'll say it again. Please, somebody out there with money who hears this broadcast, design a new YouTube because YouTube blows. They suck. End of story. And we need a new one. So, somebody with money who feels like being free and beating the new world order, and winning, and uh, you know. Maybe in Russia we need the server where this co you know where the the copyright uh, cops or whatever you want to call them or copyright bullies I guess you could say can't get to it. But uh, we definitely need something that we can upload to because YouTube is very 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 much a turd. They suck. Uh, they block everything. They censor. The only reason why I still use them is because again they're like what number three or number four in the world on alexa i think they're or one of the top five sites uh in the world and daily motion and vimeo and all that other stuff uh they, they 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 can't compare when it comes to the amount of uploads and everything else and uh you know i've looked into it it's just trust me youtube is where the fight is and that's why we're still there otherwise uh all the stuff i've gone through believe me it's not peachy to keep making new um YouTube channels because YouTube takes them down. I can't even. I, I'd have to go back and actually write them all out now. I, I think it's at five or six or yeah, five or six channels that are at, gone, killed in action. Ugh, just frustrating. All right, enough blabbering about our woes. I want to get into uh, one last thing here tonight. TSA. 
I mean, we all know they're out of control and they keep trying to expand them and everything else. And we need to keep pushing back and saying no. And everybody says, well, you know, TSA is there for our safety, blah, 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 blah. No, they are not. And the easy way to wake people up to that fact is this. Show them things like the following, okay? TSA declares a scared four-year-old child a high security threat, proceeds to terrorize her and her mother. Now, Joe read this on air on his show yesterday for the listeners that listen to Joe's show as well. And it was written by the mom, and I posted it on uh, Federal Jack. She did not write it for me. It was uh, She put it up as a post on Facebook, and it was brought to my attention. And I posted it as an article so people could see, and it could get some attention. And uh, the actual link to the Facebook post is at the bottom, the original, where I got everything from, and I, I gave it the new title. Point is, this isn't an isolated incident with TSA over the past couple of days making the news again. Okay, what do I mean? Well, let's say you have a former FBI agent and anti-terrorist expert uh, going on airnation.net, or I guess getting interviewed by Air, airnation.net uh, last month. And there, this is, you know, I guess, an aviation industry uh, website, and I, I'm sure that I guess they might even do. Uh, I'm not sure if they do a magazine or not, but it's a, at least an internet uh, periodical, if you want to call it that. And it's about the, the flight industry and everything. And he comes out and he says that they're useless. Uh, they're just completely useless. You know, it's a joke, security theater, which everybody has said a bazillion times. Then, if you go to USA Today Travel. To uh, I can't get a date on this. There is none. Uh, so I'm, and I know it's newer, but I can't see the exact date it was posted. Um, they don't have it on the article, which is kind of weird. Well, this is updated 22 minutes ago, so I'm assuming this is newer within the past 24 hours here. So TSA screeners charged with drug trafficking at LAX. Well, that's nice. But no, these people are the people that are supposed to be protecting us. These are the people that you're letting touch your wife and your daughter and, and grope your son and X-ray you. And they tell you, oh, don't worry, that, that backscatter thing, that's fine. It's not a microwave oven. Yeah. So these are the people that you're looking to for security, right? These are the people that were being offered, I should say, uh, as security. The government is saying, look to these people for security and safety and coming to rescue you from terrorists. And these people are running drugs. These people are getting caught. You know, one guy got, he, uh, I know of at least one dude on duty, he dragged, uh, what was she, 15, 14, 15 year old girl into the bathroom and raped her at the airport right there. These guys are stealing money. They harassed a veteran, an uh, 80-something-year-old vet, I think. He's uh, And they stole 300 bucks from him. They harassed people in wheelchairs. They picked on a 4-year-old girl because she hugged her grandmother. And they, they freaked out and told the mother they were going to shut the airport down. And then they treated the kid like a terrorist. She was crying, and they kept yelling and screaming at her. I mean, at what point do we not just fire these people? Why are we waiting for... Well, you know, they were th – this agency was created. No, man, we need to march on Washington and we need to demand an end to this crap. Like tomorrow, disband Department of Homeland Security. There's no need for them at all. I don't care when anybody says it's involved with Homeland Security. That's bullshit. We do not need them, okay? We do not need Homeland Security. Okay, we do not need it at all. Yeah, it's good that those agencies may work together, but those agencies do not need to be the Gestapo, okay? They, and they don't need to work for Janet uh, or as um, John Connor calls her, uh, Manit Napolitano. We don't need to we, – we, we don't need to – we don't need that whole agency. It's just that we can get rid of that. Get rid of it. Goodbye. Throw that out along with a bunch of other stuff. We don't need this crap. It's all going to be irrelevant anyway, honestly. I've said this a thousand times. Uh, that's what they're afraid of. The end goal, the end game of this whole thing, what everybody says to me, well, you know, describe in a few sentences uh, well, what this is all about. And uh, I've thought about it for a long time, and the, the best way I can explain it in a few sentences is this. These people that are in charge right now that have, quote-unquote, power, 
and I'm doing air quotes because that we really have the power. But what what, what the the problem is these people that are in power or have control of things right now, okay, they are becoming irrelevant because people, humanity as a whole, is evolving. It may not seem like it, but we are. That's why there's it, it, it's such a. Uh, a, a difficult place right now and why this world is so uh, horrific, I guess, for lack of a better term, with the way we treat each other, because we are going through this metamorphosis and you can't have change without experiencing both the good and the bad, because you have to reflect on the bad uh, and the good in order to uh, logically, it, it's well, I could get off onto a whole tangent here. The point is, you know what I mean? You have to experience good things and bad things to, to evolve. Okay. In a nutshell. And the, the best way I could put it in a few sentences is they are uh, – we are evolving and they are becoming irrelevant and they are fearful of that and that is why they're doing everything they're doing and the physical manifestation of their fear would be the police state, the FEMA camps, the, the cops in Darth Vader outfits, the you know, new, new guns, bombs, bullets, rockets, you know, new laws, all of it bodyguards, private security contractors, death, destruction, you know, putting it up in your face. We're going to lock you up if you breathe in the wrong direction. We'll make a law so that pissing in the wind is illegal. All of it is, a lot of that is posturing, post, you know, uh, like uh, animals do. You know, certain animals, they, 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 they'll, they'll do things to, to ward off a predator and they'll, they'll try to make themselves, even if they're little, they'll try to make themselves look bigger. Maybe they have like flaps of skin that they can make, you know, stick out. Look at a cobra. He opens his hood so he looks more intimidating. Okay, that's what they're doing. They are becoming irrelevant and they are so scared of that fact that they have to use fear and intimidation to control everybody. And they're freaking out. And this whole FEMA camp, NDAA, all of that is a physical manifestation of their fear of you. Because you are a powerful entity. You are a free human being. You are infinite consciousness experiencing life. And you are evolving. And it scares them. Because they're becoming irrelevant and you will no longer need them. And their entire lifestyle depends on that. That's pretty much it in a nutshell. So time to get up and evolve. Ladies and gentlemen, thanks for listening to me ramble tonight. Don't forget, tune in Friday. Carolyn Rose Goyd is going to be hanging out with me, I promise. Always an awesome show when she comes on. And Sunday, special broadcast with Judith. Love you all. I'm out.